Hello, dear friend. Welcome back. After defending Nasal from the Black Limb Demons, the Rift Seekers are asked to help out once again. Brahm Aran, the leader of Nasal's Ironwood Watchers, beseeches the party in aiding him in taking the fight to the Black Limb Demons. However, they must convince the other captains of the Ironwood Watchers before they make their move. Welcome back to Fragments of a Lost Home, everybody. <laughs> what? <laughs> what was that? What happened, Dublin? What happened? Oh no. Did uh -huh. they get it wrong? There's no tomato on this regular fucking taco, and yet. Hey, why is there tomato on the inside too? They were like, they said. You were planted. <laughs> you cannot say now that there was no tomato on it. I wanted no tomato. <laughs> it was just a tomato in the taco. That's so funny. Oh, yeah. No, there was. Oh, okay. That's the funniest part. Is like there was also one in the taco. Just one. Just one. Just one. Just one. Welcome back to. <laughs> I hate tomatoes. Welcome back to tomato time. It is the. <laughs> Welcome back Session to tomato 32. talk. Tell me about your favorite type of tomato. <laughs> I actually like don't. Doing. I hate tomatoes. Thank you. Why do they feel like snot in my mouth? <laughs> what? We don't even have to drive for this week's cold opening. <laughs> <laughs> it's already done. Thanks, guys. You made my job so much easier. I don't even have to edit it anymore. <laughs> this is the part where we all stand up and just take a bow. <laughs> You're retiring here, we peaked. We are retiring, thank you. <laughs> 32 <laughs> sessions in and we've peaked. We cannot and get any better. The episode ends right there. <laughs> <laughs> Roll credits. You know what, fuck this actually. <laughs> you know, you just go, Today, today's not our day, guys. Tomatoes. It's just flat, it's just flat lines. <laughs> Tomates, not our day. Tomates, not our day. What is going on? We haven't even started playing the fucking game and all of us have collectively lost our fucking minds. <laughs> You're speaking in fucking scat man. Epic <laughs> but the it's muffled that I'm dead on the floor. <laughs> there's just, just <laughs> there's a camera that's in the corner of the room. And that is. It's just like that. End oh. me right now, please. Oh I beg my for you. God. I don't want to do this anymore. What if we did? Ow. I can make that happen. It's okay. No way. <laughs> no. Delete. Delete. No, I like had my wrist in between my legs and I went to move and it got stuck and it got really tight. I just, it twisted wrong and I went, ah! How did we get here? I, you're asking the wrong person, <laughs> my friend. It's a fucking tomato. It all started. Yeah. It all started with a tomato. Eight nuclear missiles! Seven nuclear missiles! <laughs> It's gotta be the tomato double. Okay. 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 We got this. Nope. Let's try this again. We're in. Nope. We're in ethos right now. The biosphere. I'm immersed. Where there is thing. Okay. Great. Anyways, continuing on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm killing off a character today. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Is oh. a. <laughs> <laughs> we just need a close up. Okay, find your space. It's gonna be the longest cold opening in history. Just like jump cuts. Okay. Hold on. This meeting's gotta be serious and I can't. I was trying to do like, uh, that. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have we all got it out? Are we good? Yes. Great. <laughs> Loving this. Okay. Eight minutes later. So, where we last left off, you guys have made it into the town of Nasal after fighting off the Black Limb Demons and securing 
the druid Nakoa, the last protector of the Ironwood Tree, and Brom, one of the captains of the Ironwood Watchers, a big, bulky, copper, dragonborn paladin. Um, after all of that, after Dara talking to some gods, and then Macau and Dara talking to Nakoa, you guys were called into a meeting uh, with Brom uh, to decide what to do about this threat um, now that it is ever more present and being led by a new foe, the clown that you guys fought before entering Lothmanger. Um, the Black Limb Demons broke into Nasal. And they almost breached the inner walls if it wasn't for you guys and the clowns seeing you and saying, I'll come back later with an even bigger force. So, you have about a day until they come back. That's what he said. He said, I'm gonna come back later, next day. So, Brom, the copper dragonborn, leads you into like a war room. There so is a round table, multiple chairs surrounding it. Um, and you see entering the room, um, a band of Ironwood Watcher soldiers or Ironwood Watchers. Um, and then the captains would take their place at their seats. Um, the most notable ones here, um, apart from Brom, uh, you would see uh, sitting down across from him is a red dragonborn uh, wearing black armor. So almost like the exact opposite of what Brom is wearing. It's still very much um, like plate mail, like heavy plate mail, um, but it's like black and red, uh, which is like a stark contrast to Brom's like white steel and like gold color. Um, and then on across from uh, the red dragonborn, <sighs> Uh, you see what appears to be like a purple crystalline dragonborn. Um, this uh, female dragonborn seems to be dressed up in like a <clears throat> long kind of like flowing robe. Um, she has like a staff by her that she sets down on the table in front of her. Uh, she has kind of like a longer neck and just more of like a sleeker um like body um very much more of like a like snake than really like a dragonborn i guess um the horns on this dragonborn um very much like a rift walker they are like fragmented shards that are all held together by some force that form almost kind of like spiked like deer antlers that's fucking crap hmm. so these two captains and Brom are the three notable ones that sit down. All the other ones appear to be either like vice captains or just kind of like advisors of some sort or like secondhand um, people. So <clears throat> they sit down at the round table and as Brom leads you into this room, uh, he turns towards you all um, and just speaks in like a quieter hushed tone. Um, I do appreciate you all being here really means a lot to me um listen this might be a bit difficult but i am trying i've been trying to get a large force of us ironwood watchers to attack the black limb demon fortress however every time i bring it up i'm always opposed none of the other captains agree with me and after today's attack and with your help I believe that they will finally listen to me. They will listen to us. And it seems like that uh, uh, woohoo character, the, uh, the clown the, that one, yes. Yeah. He'll recognize you. And um, do you have a uh, past with him? Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. I see. yeah, we damn near killed him. <clears throat> Try to. We can use that, yes. So. <clears throat> God, you look fucking what? Now, I will go ahead and take my seat. If you just would uh, stand near me, that would be great. Yeah. That would show force. Uh, we're not trying to be intimidating here. We're just trying to show that we are capable, yes? Uh, oh, sure. yep. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Whew. 
let's do this. And he goes and takes his seat at the round table, pulls up his chair, and the meeting commences. Um, first off, before like anyone speaks, they kind of um, introduce the captains to make sure everyone's like on board with everything. Like they uh call the captains like stand up and like show that they're here um they understand what's going on so yes attendants thank you um so brahm is called first and he stands up um and he just states his name brahm aron captain of the ironwood watchers um and then they call the next one uh the red dragonborn with the black armor stands up ogiran bihan Captain of the Ironwood Watchers. And then the third dragonborn um, stands up, the purple one. Spearbiter, Captain of the Ironwood Watchers. And then all three of them would sit down. Um, so the meeting commences and they start talking about the events that occurred today. The town seems defenseless. The Black Limb Demons have come back. And then you would start hearing them talk about their history with the Black Limb Demons. Um, so, like, collectively, like, one by one, they would talk about how um, it's been... Um, let me pull up my notes for this. It's been many, many years since this town has been attacked by any of the Black Limb Demons. The last time that they were attacked by these demons, they were led by Uthgore the Tall. Uthgore the Tall? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, Uthgore, his entire goal was to cut down all of the ironwood trees and use the materials for himself. Um, that's when the Ironwood Watchers were created, and that's when uh, Uthgore uh, made a pact with the Black Limbs. Um, he specifically made a, a pact with an very, a very powerful demon. This demon was named Drez al Ghul. Drez al Ghul was then known as the Queen of the Black Limb Demons. He made a pact with her, and then he commanded a massive force of these demons. Um, the battle was, er, the war between this went on for quite some time, but it was uh, concluded uh, when the Ironwood Watchers finally uh, slayed Uthgorm. Um, after that, they led an attack against the Black Limb Demons um, at what is now called the Raised Fortress. Um, the fortress was sieged by the Ironwood Watchers, and they um, they defeated the Black Limb Demons and basically ran them back into the abyss. What was the fortress called? The Raised Fortress. R A Z E D. Back into the abyss. Yes. You would hear them talk about... Well, actually... Go ahead and make a perception check. Move. I believe in you. I don't have I believe my, in you! I don't have my bird. I'm inside. Well. I believe that's a nine total. Mm. Yep. Okay. Um, you wouldn't really catch anything else apart from them saying that they drove you back into the abyss. But it seems like in hushed tones, you would hear other people say something a, a little bit more about it. It wasn't just the abyss. There was something else to it. Anyways, so after they kind of conclude about like the history of what has happened, what they've done before, the tactics that have worked, the events that occurred today, Brom would finally stand up and in a commanding voice, um, start talking about his plans my fellow ironwood watchers we have done this before we have successfully drove off the black limb demons yes they have come back 
Yes, our forces are not as large as they once were, but together we are strong. I propose that we attacked, attack the raised fortress. We again drive back this threat. Slay all in our path, and the one who leads them this time. And we have help this time. And he turns back to you and like gestures. Did you tell him your group name? I don't think you did. Yes, we did. You did. I did. did. Okay, yes. Cool. We have the Rift Seekers, adventurous, brave, and courageous. If it was not for them, Nakoa and I would not be standing here today. We owe them our lives. The Ironwood Three would not be standing here if it weren't for them. These brave soldiers, warriors, can help us. And he turns back to you and just kind of like winks at all you. <laughs> Me and just both um, like... You would then see um, Ogurin, or Ogurin, the red dragonborn, stand up and like slam his fist on the ground. <laughs> We must surrender to them. We have already lost so many lives and you want to risk more. For the sake of this tree, all of our druids are slain. Nokoa can't do anything. We lose this fight, Brum. I suggest we leave. With the people we have now, with the civilians in this town, we abandon Nasal for the good of our people. We can build up our forces later, but for now, our forces, we are not strong as we once were. Brom, you live in a dream. This cannot happen. I propose we leave for the safety of all of us. And the people, the Ironwood Watchers standing behind him, they all start agreeing with him. Um, and then Spearbiter, the purple uh, crystalline dragonborn, stands up. I propose something different. I propose we stay and defend this town. We send out for reinforcements, anyone that would hear us, hear our call for aid. But we hold up, we defend, we rebuild the wall. And immediately as she says, rebuild the wall, um, um, Ogurans and Brahms like side of the Iron Watchers would all start arguing with each other all three different groups start arguing with what they should do some believe that repairing the wall won't do anything because they've already broken through uh, some think that yes we should attack to save this town and then some people just flat out think we should leave so as all this is going on it is just kind of like chaos right now um is there anything you guys want to do to try to intervene at this point? Why couldn't we do all three things? There's not enough forces. There don't need to be enough forces to do all three things. All three things are completely possible. Actually, we hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. Just, <laughs> just after more and more and I'm like, okay, so listen to my idea. I'm listening. So here's what I'm thinking. Here's the town. Right? Mm -hmm. She wants to rebuild the wall. Understandable. Do a, do a shitty job. Rebuild the wall. Make the, make the fox think that they're going to defend. Have everybody go somewhere else. Hide out. So they go and attack the fucking town. There's no one there. Ambush. It's a solid idea, but if they're fast enough, they can still take the tree. And we can't risk that. So we have like a couple dudes chilling with the tree. A couple dudes against a larger force than. A couple already... dudes, aka us. Because then they'll think, oh, we can we can take the heart of the tree easy. There's only there's two stupid fucks here. We can crush we... them. Simple. But then. And then all of a sudden, bam, bam, shadow rah, 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 rah. And it's a fucking ambush. <laughs> all three things are possible. Because by building the wall, you're making the town look like it's still. No, like they're going Biz, then. No, I'm, I I'm understand exactly what you guys are doing. It's just at. a giant facade. I, I understand. Because if they're caught off guard, you don't need to worry about numbers. If you are surprised, you're scatterbrained, you don't know what to do. 
And you need yeah. to oh, you need to reevaluate. And you're like, oh fuck, and you don't have enough time to reevaluate. Have you fought in wars and battle? No. You can tell. I can tell. Okay, well, still. Yeah, nothing. It's not a bad idea. What do you want to do? What is I'm you? personally with Rom. On go fight time? Mm-hmm. <sighs> Sieging the fortress is deadly, but not a bad idea. I mean, I like it too, but then if we leave the town, then that leaves the street defenseless. I was yeah. like... We split the forces. We go... Maybe take a couple people. And take a couple. We don't need a lot. Take Brahm and some of his best and let the others stay. But I'm still getting nervous Hold with on. the tree. Hold on. Because then what if we come back and the tree is gone and they're like, fuck you guys. Okay. You left and then it's all our fault I mean, and then it's just... We can't it. plan for every eventuality. Do you see I mean, but the cow or the fortress? Mm-hmm. Take a couple days with. Yep. Some people, like most of their forces, because they don't have a lot, most of their forces will stay with the tree and defend it. That, so that's siege and defend. So the civilians can skadoodle to get away from the conflict. It is an option. So that's once again the, all three. The civilians don't really need to be there. Yeah. The civilians could help. At this point They're in time, honestly just kind of at this point in time, um, Nikoa, you would see, like, um, you would see kind of like light pour into the room, and from the the double like big doors that you guys walked into, um, you would see light as it cracks open, and Nikoa like peers in and looks and sees everything going on. Um, you see, Brom has his like hand on his head and just like wiping sweat off. <sighs> and he like turns around and he like looks at you guys who are all like huddled together and talking and then like looks over and sees Nikoa um, and Nikoa and them like share like a, they're looking at each other and Nikoa would then just like run in and like run up to Brom and like pull him down to his level. You hear them like talking like hush voice and like I don't know if it would work little one. But it is worth a try. And he turns back to you guys and kind of like pokes his head into your, like your little huddle pile. Oh, um, oh uh, apologies for interrupting. No, we've got an idea. We're willing. Yes. Um, I have something that might be a little. Is I it risky? Think. Is it stupid? Yes. That. All right. right. Okay. No. Okay. Tell. tell it tell. seems like you're already in agreement. Um. Nakoa knows of something that might give us an upper hand on attacking, but I would need your help specifically in obtaining this help. Okay. This no can we can we keep going? I it, can be very persuasive. Good. A strong I, arm. I can. Yeah. We will need that. Keep yes. speaking. Sorry. So, <laughs> the Brookbone Forest. While it was known for the ironwood trees, yes, it was also known for being the home of living trees uh-huh. and the one such called the spirit of the forest the one that commanded these trees Nakova just brought it up to me i didn't think of it if we can speak to the spirit of the forest and get the trees on our side we can storm the fortress with an army greater than what we had before Many years ago, when we attacked Athgore, it would make it so much easier. Less lives would be lost. We would actually pose a threat, a credible threat. Maybe without violence, we could drive back the demons. It would be difficult for you to find the spirit and then convince it. No one has seen the spirit in ages, but Nakoa swears that it still lives in the Brookbond Forest. Would we be able to take him with us? Well, yeah, he's got to talk to the spirit. Yeah. He's got to talk to it. I me. mean, no. Huh? Huh? Nature, huh? Papa. Huh? Sorry. As, as much as I would love for Nakoa to leave this place. The tree. Yeah. yeah. If anything happens to him, anything at all, 
Nasal and the last island with three is doomed. Yep. Oh, uh, stupid I, yeah. Stupid thought. It Sorry. Is, it was not a bad idea. I just... None of us can risk that. Now, I will propose this idea. I will just need you to back me up on this one, yeah? Yeah. Very good. Uh, the, he turns around and just like hands. swings out his arms and just... <laughs> Big boss chill. Please, please, allow me to speak. And everyone kind of like hushes down and all eyes land on Braum. I propose a new idea. With the help of the Rift Seekers and with Nikoa's bright and wise mind, we seek out the spirit of the forest and immediately everyone is like concerned. Not so much arguing, just be like, ooh, don't know if this is a good idea. This We've never had help from the spirit before and ooh, spirit could be angry from what happened. Um, but Ogiron would speak up again. This is not a good idea. We have never received help from the spirit. Why would he help us now? I still propose we leave. And he turns back to the rest of his group who are all just like, yes, men at this point and all start agreeing with him. And then Spearbiter speaks up. I agree with Brahm on this one. And Ogiron Ooh, if his eyes could poof, burst into flame, yeah. they would. And he just looks at Spearbiter with this stare that could kill a man. She doesn't even look his way. Oh. I love women. If we get the spirit of the forest on our side, we would have the power of nature, the greatest strength on the biosphere. Demons would not stand a chance. Forget defending the town. The demons would not make it past the trees. And then the rest of her group starts agreeing with her. Ogeron is fuming pissed at this point. I cannot believe what I am hearing. You are going to risk the lives of everyone in this town for this, for this fantasy, this idea that we will get help this time. Where was the spirit when Othgor attacked? When all the trees were still alive? Where was he? Nowhere! And at that point, he just slams the fist on the table again. And he stands up. I am adjourning this meeting for myself. I am leaving and I'm taking whoever will stand with me. Good luck on your own. If you are smart, you will leave with me. Oh my god. And he pushes himself from the table and he stands up. And Brahm, he yells after him, My brother, please, we need your help. We cannot do this alone. You are strong, please. And Ogaron just turns around. If you are smart, you would leave with me, brother. Please, I beg of you, surrender. Brahm just kind of looks defeated at this point. I have stood with you for many years, Ogaron. I cannot stand by you this time. I'm sorry. And Ogron just... Pah! Fools! And he turns around and just... Poosh! Opens the doors and leaves. And the rest of like his group of Ironwood Watchers just kind of like all look concerned. And the majority of them leave with him. I'm starting the running now. Pussy. <laughs> Literally. <sighs> right. Well... For the rest of us, we build up our defenses. We get rest where we can. Whoever can pick up a sword will join the Ironwood Watchers. Spearbiter, you are in charge of defenses. I will make sure everyone is ready to go for tomorrow. Rift Seekers. Mm. Yes. We are relying on you. Look at this. We'll fuck up, Sean. That's an interesting one, but yeah. We'll save this place. Thank you. <sighs> this meeting of the Ironwood Watchers is now adjourned. May Kilo, Asunta, Mfane, and Tigon watch over us all and bless us in battle. God's speed. God's. <laughs> God's speed. I just need to put a little bit of a pause in there so you know. <laughs> God's. 
Speaking and with that, mobile. he nods, and the rest of them do like the Ironwood watch salute. And you always hear as all their fists like slam against their plate mail. And then they just all kind of scatter in a jerk. Uh, Spearbiter would walk up to all of you. And she is, um, she's pretty tall for a uh, dragonborn. Uh, her neck makes her taller, a little bit taller than Braum, but she is a very thin, sleek build, very slender. Um, and she walks over to you. She has a, um, like stature to her uh very much you can tell just by the way she walks um her foot placement and everything a very intelligent being likes to think things through very pragmatic and logical um and she comes up to all of you her hands like clasped together in front of her chest so you are the rift seekers yes yes mm-hmm. well thank you for helping us. Thank you for aiding Brahm and Nakoa. The gods were watching over us this day. They sent us you. Now, I won't put it lightly. Spirit of the forest, it will be hard to find. In order to find the spirit, you must lose yourself in the forest. I've tried a few times myself. So has, so have many of the others. Druids as well. Some say they were successful. But most of us have lost faith that the spirit exists. The trees have not sang their songs in so long. They have not moved. We have not felt them in quite some time. So if you are successful, this will be a monumental day for our town. Are we going to be fucking embarrassed? I do apologize for you. You should be embarrassed. Ogeron wants what's best for everyone and he believes that's leaving. And while some may agree, this town means everything to our order. Ogeron believes that the lives of everyone means more than what we stand for. In his own way, it is a noble cause. Mm -hmm. But to the rest of us, we cannot simply abandon what we have protected for years now what we have fought for it would mean nothing if we just abandon it i'm sure you would understand yes i also am going to assume you had your own encounters with the black limb demons briefly yeah mm-hmm. <sighs> that was so much yeah i'm uh, i still kind of have a dent ah uh. I'm just kind of... Well, our healers can see to it that you are um, properly taken care of. Yeah, yeah. Um, go see them before you leave, please. Just to make sure you're all right. Um, did you by any chance encounter one of the larger creatures? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, yes. I uh, oh. beheaded it three times. Yes. Myself. Those ones have given us quite a bit of trouble over the past few days. Those were the ones that actually broke down the walls. Um, I I believe it. Yes, yes. Um, Those, those are called the Black Limb Gideras. The what? The Black Limb Gideras. We try to differentiate them from the regular demons since they are more credible threat. Now, um... That doesn't equal this costume. I wouldn't suggest um since you are adventurers and of a different mindset than the rest of us if you want more help in slaying these creatures you can seek out him apologize i'm sorry 
<laughs> Apologies. <laughs> Apologize! <laughs> um, Apologies. Um, we do not like seeking out his advice. But for adventurers like you and who have helped us, if you are looking for different tactics in fighting these demons, go look for the Saint of War, as they call him. We refer to him as the Mad Genius, as he has come up with some good inventions of his own. Some of them are a bit... How would I put it? Uh, brutal? Not always. You'll find him in the town. He has a basement abode. And also, just for my sake, mm. what are the big pictures called again? The black and what? Ghidoras. Ghidoras. Definitely. Yeah, that's Ghidorah. 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 Yeah. I hate yeah. him. Because <laughs> it has three heads. <laughs> and because I love Godzilla. <laughs> in, in town, which which town did you say? Oh, he's here in Nazo. He's on the outskirts of town. Uh, just just before one of the walls. And she uh, tells you like exactly where he is and where to find him. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, that's what we're going to do. Oh my god. <laughs> He's back? He's back in the building. That motherfucker can chew! Let's go! <laughs> Probably can eat my burrito. <laughs> how are your teeth feeling? Huh? Teeth. We said, how, how are your teeth? How's Fine. your teeth? Fine. Okay. Okay. Is there any other questions you might have that I could possibly answer? Um... You say lose yourself in the forest. Any ideas to exactly what that entails? Because that's real vague. If I just like run fast enough, yeah, and then but take a couple turns. I'll to get say if I lost. just close my eyes and start wandering, I'll <laughs> lose myself eventually. Not quite. I mean, it's a good idea, but thank you. <laughs> 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 Why was that so the most ornin thing I've ever heard? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was a good idea. Thank That's you. a great idea. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have spoken to many of the druids before all of them departed from this plane. Um, most of them that I've spoken to have all said the same thing. To lose yourself in the forest, to become one with nature, with the biosphere, to find the spirit, you must feel everything around you, the trees, the earth you walk upon, the wind, the sun, the shade, all of it. That is t to lose yourself. So we're leaving the forest spirit to you two, and we'll go talk to we'll just the, the, oh, the, the war, guy. the war bitch. I was going to say we'll get lost in the woods and you'll get lost in the trees. But uh, that's smarter. If that's what we're doing, we can rally the soldiers. Okay. Yeah, I like to rally. Do war paint. What? Do war paint. War paint? Mm hmm. I can teach you my cultures. Do war what? This of paint! <laughs> yeah, you're good. Yeah, I know you're sad. I'm not talking about you. Yeah, we can do yours or we can do my cultures. I, um, I could do they might have their own. Yeah. I'll find out. Hey, that's what we're going to talk to the guy about. One of the things. There is no better way to bring spirits than to bring people together. Okay. Oh boy, unity. Yeah, I can, we can do that. I believe in you. Okay. Can we? 
Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm yes. Just, we can do. This is not funny business. There is a town. It's the here. <laughs> goofy? These, these two are going to go find the tree spirit and then also have trees that move and breathe and walk around and then... Is and you're goofing? Goofy? You're just... What is, thing? What is I don't goofy think a about? tree can breathe. What is not goofy about? I'm sorry. I feel like that's you wrong. Start the, it has to get tree air. It's that's not all I can think of. breathing, though. It's a different if process. you okay. need me... Right! Hey! <laughs> you are I have gone. here. <laughs> The yeah. way your party delegates things is amusing. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a work in progress. <laughs> since, uh, works. since we met. If you need me, I'll be in my quarters. You guys do war paint? <laughs> we can, yes. We have someone who is proficient in painting. If you would like to seek them out, I'm sure they can give you the war paint you desire. Oh, I don't need it. I, I know how to do it for myself. Huh? I'm just meaning it could bring heart to the soldiers who's just had a rough battle in preparation for what may come tomorrow. I've never thought of that. Unity. Yes, unity. And you have to forgive me. I'm not what, not one for bringing up morale. That is... Purely, and she like points over to Brom. Mm-hmm. He's the one who brings up morale. Yes. Um, yeah, that makes sense. But I think that is a very good idea in bringing each other together, even if it is through just mere war paint. I think it can strengthen the morality of the soldiers and. bring unity. Sorry, lost in thought. You... I will go ahead and, and speak to our local painter, see what they can do. But, um, a pleasure meeting you, Rift Seekers. I wish you all the luck that the Biosphere can muster. Thank you. Thank you. And you get some rest. <laughs> as much as you can. I will certainly try. Thank Just you don't again. Stress yourself. And she dismisses herself. Uh, you can see Brahm and Nakoa who are kind of like exchanging words. Brahm is like kneeling down to Nakoa's level. Are they just like best friends? Maybe. Hmm. I'm just like watching for a second. No, we're both just like, just like staring at him a little bit. Okay. Okay. Kind of like a big brother vibe. Maybe. I can tell. So, um, as they are talking, um, Brahm would, like, rest a hand on Nikoa's sh- shoulder, um, kind of, like, comforting or consoling him, uh, before he kind of, like, kind of, like, gently pushes him away, um, and Nikoa would leave the meeting room, and Brahm would, like, stand up and just kind of, like, put his hands on his hips and just take, like, a sigh of relief, and, Oy. Yeah. Right, Will. You have your tasks. Uh, is there anything, anything that you would need from us? Maybe nice healing. Yeah. Ah, yes. Go speak to our healers. They can heal you up really good. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. But that go. does not really give it. your spells back. Yeah, I'm no, completely out of spells. I, mean, I, I know I'm... Yeah, we need to sleep. Yeah, eventually. There's... Yeah. Because I also need to get my hit die back. I've got uh, one third level, level two, one second, and then all of my first. All I've and got are these of, bad boys. Of yeah. shape too. <laughs> That's all I got. That's all I have. I don't have any I more have uh, divinity left. key shit. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure I used that. I did. The tank has Bulk. run dry. I ain't got no devouring range left. Duh. Yeah. Well, if you need to rest, you're more than welcome to rest. But uh, the sooner you get on this task, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the more uh, peace of mind I could have, yeah? No, no we do that eight. first. I'm sorry. <laughs> And there we sleep. So, Jimmy. I need to go speak to what's left of Ogiron's brigade. So, is there anything else uh, I could do for you? Hmm? Mm-hmm. Anything, please. I'm gonna sleep for ten minutes. I'm gonna go. All right. Okay. Very good. Good night. <laughs> what are you doing? Short rest. Ah, first time. 
because that'll get me back some of my stuff. Yeah, no, okay, I think that's good. I think that's great. Sure. I'm not getting any spells off the Oh, right. Yeah, I can get some health back. Um, I get my wild shapes back and my channel of identity. Okay. <laughs> so, Ornan, um, he's kind of like standing beside you and just as he um, kind of like, um, he just goes, okay, well, thank you. And then just, just right on your back, just this massive dragonborn hand, just five, five stars <laughs> you on the back, like congratulatory, and then just walks away. It was a big meaty hand on your back. Was, he's strong. That dude's strong. <laughs> big meaty claws. And then he walks over to uh, the rest of Ogeron's brigade and starts talking to them. And you really see him trying to like uh, boost the morale and, and saying like, thank you for staying here. Um, here's what we can do. Um, you can fall under spear biters or mind command. Um, and then he, he's just trying to... to tell them that they're making the right decision here okay yeah so okay so rift seekers what are oh before that ambrose oh, would actually hey. like step forward hey and uh you see visibly he is uncomfortable being here oh. he does not like this whatsoever <laughs> um so ambrose would come up and be like um <clears throat> I am not welcome here, guys. Um, I was walking around and kind of like just looking at things, you know, trying to gauge what's in our surroundings. Um, yeah, they, they, ooh, uh, dystopian gods? Hmm. Uh, 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 highly forbidden here. And uh, I got... One motherfucker who's talking to me, who's uh, one of the worst dystopian gods. Yeah. And then I got the spirit of this other guy, yeah. who's also very shadowy and shady and weird. And, you know, yeah. so uh, I don't know what I should be doing. And um, I, don't, I think maybe if I just, like, lay low or, like, maybe I can go with you guys. Because uh, being in this town is not good for me. Yeah, really At cool. some point in time, it could just be... Like, 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 come out, you know, and they, or they might just find out. I'm really scared being here, guys. Yeah, no, that My is, only that's, fear. That's the... And dystopian gods, once more. Spirit of the forest. Oh, yeah. shit. We don't know how they're gonna. Fuck. I think it's probably better if we go with these two. Yeah, hey, we're going to find, like the, find the mad genius. Yeah, we're going to the outskirts of the Okay, town. okay. So yeah. we can yeah, we are lay low. Yeah, we're looking for the yeah. mad genius. We don't got to talk to anybody. Okay, I guy. just don't want to be around. And she kind of like, uh, he kind of turns. Um, and you would see um, as you're like looking over like towards <coughs> Ogeron's brigade. Br- brigade, Jesus. Um, it's a weird word. Yeah, the syllables aren't syllabling um there's like one of them who has her arms like crossed and she kind of like every once in a while you'll see her eyes like dart towards ambrose like suspiciously and so ambrose kind of like sees that and like Mm -hmm. tries to hide inside the group yeah i will very pointedly step between her and him Mm -hmm. and just like face (laughs) away from her with my back i just ambrose immediately kind of like grabs your collar and just don't don't make it a big deal. No, I'm not making it a big deal. I'm just, you, I'm just getting closer to you. Is that the problem? No. And Ambrose kind yeah. of like, almost kind of like nuzzles into mm-hmm. like your back mm-hmm. and just kind of like shrinks his head down. Mm-hmm. So there. I'll just follow you guys, okay? Yeah. Cool. Perfectly fine by me. Okay. Is this where we say farewell? Until tomorrow, maybe? This evening? This evening? I don't think. We don't know how lost they're gonna get. Yeah. Ooh. So we'll say at the latest tomorrow. If would be nice to see you sooner. Do me a favor. Yep. Yeah, pull the Karnix off. If I'm not back, use that. Am I allowed to? I think he just said so. I think if he's giving you permission. This doesn't feel right. I wish it was me. If we're not back in time, then you're riding the wolf and I will help. That, that'll be the bell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Take it. Fair enough. It's big. <clears throat> it's not hard. Blowing it. It'll scream. 
It doesn't no, work. No, I know exactly what this does. Good. I did. That's pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> Take good care of it. <clears throat> Otherwise, I will be burying you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, fight us. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> I had enough of you today. I swear to God. Six. Six hours of you walking around in an empty ass ballroom just quoting that shit for hours without tissue boy. Settle down, tissue boy. Jesus Christ, Keith. I thought that when we hung out, you got it out of your system. No, dude. <laughs> That's my weekly vocal stim. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we'll fight us. <laughs> hey, Stephanie, Stephanie was like, what the fuck are you saying? Because I, no, I sent it, her a, a voice thing. Because she, she was like texting me on Instagram. And I just, Ladies and gentlemen, Foo Fighters. <laughs> She's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> no, it's because it would go dead silent in the MA and just keep the pack. Just pass. They're just like, Foo Fighters. I was like, huh? Huh? I'm gonna message you. <laughs> He's done. <laughs> I'm gonna message you at 3 a.m. Foo it's gonna be a, a voice memo. Foo Fighters. It's not even gonna be in the voice, it's gonna go Foo Fighters. <laughs> 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 Foo Fighters. Well, you'll just interpret it in the voice. <laughs> yeah. or, or just Foo Fighters. <laughs> it's like a soft little ASMR. Ladies and gentlemen, Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters. Ladies and gentlemen. Real oh, seekers. <laughs> they sweeping. Well, let's <laughs> 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 The next gladiatorial pit we're having, that's the announcer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. Look out. He's judging. <laughs> They're fighting. They're sweeping. Macau Cheval. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Macau. Macau Cheval. <laughs> the ditch <One> digger. Ditch, <laughs> ditch digger. <laughs> <laughs> Streets, ditch digger, <laughs> Miguel Cheval. He's a thiefling. <laughs> He's got one leg. <laughs> Why the long death? Why the long death, monk? Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Be careful. Not anymore. Not <laughs> you know what? You know what? Pause. I'm gonna pee my pants. <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen, oh no. <laughs> or none. Or none. Or none. Or none. Or none. Or none. Or none of this. Or Ladies none. and gentlemen, da bra. <laughs> no, da bra. Da bra. Da bra. Go marriage. Go pay. Ladies and gentlemen, mirage. 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 From Glatton Bleu. <laughs> I had to tag on that. There's gotta be something you get. No, that, no, not restore balance. Fuck ow. 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 Okay. Ow. <laughs> you can't keep getting away with this. Okay. Resume. What are we doing? Mad man. Mad genius. Okay. Well, I don't know. I rest for sleep 10 minutes. Understood. So I can get my short rest. And I guess I'll just uh, probably heal with a short rest. Yeah. Yeah. You can use your head die to heal on a short rest. Yeah, I can't I use my hit die. <laughs> I don't have any left. You used all of them? Oh, I have one. This is all I can do. You just kept fucking going. Oh. Yeah, I just kept going. Well, the five. Bro. The next. Yeah. There you go. There we go. I mean, to be fair, you only have five. Okay. okay. So. No, we're splitting the party. I did my roll. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, remember that one roll of D&D? What? Don't sweat the party. Yeah. Here I we thought, go again. I thought that was somehow yeah. tied into the beam of my No. Yeah, that's that was what like, I thought. Huh? <laughs> you never <laughs> scat in D&D. What? what? You never scat in D&D. For 
first rule of D&D. You never scat in D&D. Oh, my God. <laughs> my God. I gotta that d- needs to be on all of your fucking rule, table rules. <laughs> first rule of D&D. Never scat. Oh I'm a God. scat man. Okay. Okay. What did you say? Oh, like your you never okay. scat in D and D. That's what he said. He's like, don't you know, like the first, the rule of D and D, something like that, or don't you know the rule? <laughs> you never scat in D and D. That's what he said. Okay. 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 So you will be resting, you mm-hmm. guys. Um, you two are gonna go see the Saint of War. <laughs> so you guys would travel to the outskirts of nasal pause music searching. Why is this giving Link cookie music in Breath of the Wild? It really is. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, put put a dice in there. I'm so sorry. So accurate. I'm so sorry. ASMR. Welcome to the table. Okay. Be nice so, to it. You guys would come upon this like <laughs> cellar door, right? Like oh, a wooden no. cellar door. Um, it doesn't appear to be locked, but like the houses around it were uh, pretty badly destroyed from the <gasps> Black Limb Demon attack, but this thing seems to be secure. Uh, both of you guys make a perception check. <clears throat> Yeah. Oh, sorry. Macau no, lost his. I didn't lose it. Yeah. Don't lie. Lost. It's it, in it's, my apartment. It's been burned, actually. No, so, I burned here, it. listen. I burned what it. happened was. Um, yeah, you, tell them all about the yeah. experience that you didn't go through, but that I did. Yeah, exactly. So, you came home, obviously, and yeah. you were like, hello, boyfriend. You want to do something chaotic today? Let's fiance. Let's fiance. Um, let's, let's, let's start a <laughs> small fire and roast marshmallows inside our apartment, mind you. We do have a um, s'mores kit. Yeah. So, with the s'mores kit, you obviously needed, like, you know, kindling. Kindling. Kindling, yeah. So, yes. so uh, y- your fiance was just going around getting some like small piece of paper wherever you can find it. And obviously your character sheet was overturned. So he didn't see the front side of it and just automatically the goes there. My notebook, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, obviously, because your notebook is not labeled or anything and it's no, yeah. very chaotic. It's so yeah, awesome. goes over there, tears it up and then uses the kindling and then poof, burned. That is the truth of the matter. Anyway, perception check? Yes. I disconnected from the server for three seconds and I came back to what the fuck? <laughs> um, I'm gonna guess that I didn't have anything in that. I don't think I did. I think it's a plus one, so it's a lot. It's a, it's a wisdom. Do you remember your wisdom? Oh, my wisdom? It's a plus two. It's wisdom? Uh, Perception yes. is wisdom, yeah. It's yes. always been? Yeah. Cool, 12. Sweet. 20. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, both of you guys would hear this, actually. Um, <laughs> coming from inside are like muffled maniacal laughter followed by another voice um (laughs) essentially what you hear is Please, can you just calm down? Stop, no, you can't, you can't, you cannot do it. I'm telling you, you can't do this. Please. <laughs> it's working. I did it. I did it. I, please, this is this goes against like every law. This goes against, I, 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 you just can't. I, I'm not going to tell anyone, but you just can't, you just can't do this. It's essentially what you hear from inside. Can I just find the we thought bit? more. <laughs> is the door visible somewhere around? The door is shut, but it's you guys are like staring at it right now. I'm just hearing that, I'm just should we just go to the ba, 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 ba. I feel like in order to get this guy's approval and to have all the information given to us, we need to we need to match his freak. So we, we can do that. Easy. I think if we just... Okay, bye. What if we just stand outside the door and okay. laugh? Both of you uh, are not surprised by this. When shooting up, like from uh, beside the cellar door, you just hear, boom, and it's a little like telescope that peeks <laughs> up 
and is just directly like in your faces <laughs> and you hear like mm, mm, as it's like <laughs> like Hello? zooming in and out. Hello. Hey. <laughs> I miss you. Good morning. <laughs> So the doors like burst open and, and like holding onto the latch and like flinging himself out. You see a like pitch black tiefling um, uh -huh. with horns that have holes in them and there are like keys attached to them, like a key ring. Um, he has uh, black and red eyes and like greasy, like straight black hair that is just like crazy all over his head. He is wearing like um, looks to be very, um, like a complex, like artificer's outfit. He's got like a, uh, like a vest, like a tool vest, I guess if you would call it with like, a, it's like a vest with a whole bunch of like weird tools in it. Right. And then he's got like this really big, like bulky, like long jacket on, um, like black cloth pants and like boots on. He just whoosh, like flings it open. You see his teeth are kind of like yellow and gnarled and he just like looks up to you with these like crazed look in his eyes. Um, you hear clink, 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 as like uh, three different lenses from uh, his goggles that he's wearing just like go out to the side and he reveals his eyes. He just like looks up at you with like this crazy smile and just visitors. Mm. Correct. Come, come, yes. come, come, come. You yes. have, yes. you yes. have to see. And he just, whoever's right there just, it's probably Ambrose and just gets yanked in. And Ambrose, oh, Ambrose just oh. goes, help. <laughs> wait, okay, wait, wait, wait. What color are his eyes? Black and red. Nice. Mm -hmm. Like, I, it's a- uh, The outside. The uh, oh black of his eyes Square. and then like, uh, iris? Square. Pupil? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 iris. Pupil the red. Isis. <laughs> the Isis, Isis. red. Isis. So he's got the same color eyes, it's not. Yeah, 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 yeah. So think of almost like raven eyes, kind of, but like red. That's what Nox's eyes look like? Yes. Hey, mm -hmm. so I thought they were normal. No. Yeah, no. I thought... I must have... I, I almost thought, I almost no, thought for sure not. that they were black. Oh. Like, I almost distinctly remember... I thought for like mini, Fascinate. too, I painted them black. Fascinate. Or black or red, something like that. Yeah, it's black and red. Fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. That's what I thought. Okay. Anyways. Anyway, back to the bed. Yeah. <laughs> Help! <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> you got to see what I've done. This will oh, finally, they'll finally accept me as an Ironwood Watcher. You've got it. You just, come here. And as you guys are like, are you, what are you, what are you guys Fall, doing? Like, what's following? And yeah. I just, I loudly proclaim, I am violently enthused. I'm just like, what, I'm just like, what have you created? I'm uh, so excited. He kind of like turns around and looks up to you and goes, I'm so glad I can finally speak to someone about this. And the oh my God, of course. Mm. Oh. I want to tell me. Everything. Let me show you. You're amazing! <laughs> and he, <laughs> you guys keep walking down these like uh, stone stairway, and it just gets getting, it keeps getting darker and darker and darker until you enter this like dimly lit sub basement. It is, it smells of like mildew. It is cold down here. Um, you see that there's like uh, soot and grease that like stains the walls and everything. There are multiple like tinkering tables, like wooden. Uh, workshop benches everywhere, tools scattered all over. There's no organization whatsoever. Um, and as you guys are kind of like being led down, standing off to the side with like uh, her hands, like um, clasped together, uh, like just in front of her waist and her head is down and she like looks up to you with her eyes um, is a very short um, green dragonborn. Oh God, my mouse, hello. Um, a very short green dragonborn uh, wearing like an assistant, almost like a blacksmith attire, um, nowhere near as eccentric as this guy's outfit. Um, but she's just kind of like standing off to the side, just like, it seems very timid. Um, but you can see that she has like bits of like splattered, like black, like on her apron. And as you guys are coming down into the basement, you hear a familiar sound. I I I um and you just as you guys are getting closer this dude just keeps 
<laughs> just laughing and laughing and laughing <laughs> until you come around the corner and you see on this big table strapped in with iron bands. All of its limbs are still on it, uh, like connected to it, um, is a black limb demon. And it is struggling in this thing. Just, oh, oh, oh. And as it like looks at you, to, or like you come into the room, it poof, its head goes down, its eyes narrow and just stares at you. It goes silent for a brief moment. And it just like, it just starts screaming. And <laughs> you guys are kind of like fixated on this thing for a brief moment before you just hear, and this this dude comes over with what looks to be like a big wrench and just cocks it in the head for it. It just kind of like slumps down. And the rest of its limbs are like moving, but its head is just like knocked the fuck out. So uh, how did... How? I have done it! How? <laughs> Guile, the great artificer of nasal, has successfully captured the black lady. Thank you, thank you. I'll be accepting my award, money preferably. And now for the reveal. <laughs> he just kind of like looks over to you guys. Um, Ta da! Thank you, thank you, thank you. And he holds out his hand. I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, there. A lot. I, I think I was a gold piece. I might just place it in his hand. Hmm. Very well. Dang. And he just like tosses it back in the green dragon board. So, oh, oh, that's. <sighs> I will also take out a golden hand too. Generous. <laughs> and he just tosses it behind him. <laughs> um. <sighs> So, what do you think? It's genius, I, isn't it? I no! What are your, um, mm. do you have any particular plans or do you just, are you just gonna, just gonna keep the guy there? Yeah, or like, are you, you know? coming up with something to kill them? Like, if Oh, you vile creature, yeah, why would I kill someone? I'm probably gonna kill it. <laughs> Wait, okay. I, <clears throat> How did you manage to, um, shh. Okay, yes, sir. Do you hear that? It's the winds of change. <laughs> so, let me show you. And he like runs over to like uh, his workbench that is just piled high with tools everywhere. And you just hear, he's just like throwing things aside. Where did I put it? Ah. And he just like keeps rambling all over the place. And then as he's doing this, the green dragonborn like takes a few steps and walks up to you and she like bows uh, politely. Um, uh, hello? Greetings, hi. Um, my name is Sudi. Um, if you didn't catch it, his that one's name is Guile. Um, Sudi yeah, and Guile. S U D I. Simple. Mm -hmm. um, Not Addy. I'm, I'm his ass assistant here. Um, I apologize for his erratic behavior. He's um, he's really quite smart. He really is. He really is. He seems um, to be. He got one of those things. Yes. Um, sir, are you, are you looking for for this? And she like points her hand or gestures her hand over to like this like little kind of like alcove in the um, sub basement. He goes, yes! And he runs over and just like hugs Sudi and like picks her up and puts her down. This is why I keep you around, darling. And then he goes over and he picks up what looks to be just like a normal bola. It's oh. a like three, like three stringed with like a ball at the end. It's just a normal ass bola that he just holds up and goes, Huh? Huh? Pretty genius! Tell me I'm smart! You are so smart! Thank you. I just don't think I've ever seen that before, so I don't know what it is. You've never seen one? I've also never seen one. Let me demonstrate! And he chucks it at you, make a deck saving throw, unless you willingly don't do anything. I'll do it. <laughs> uh, my deck is for, and I'm proficient with decks, so that's a plus six. Mm -hmm. Your deck is plus four? Yeah. My proficiency bonus went up. Plus three. plus three. So it's a plus seven now. There you go. I 
Are you failing anyway? <laughs> Probably. So what did I roll earlier for my perception check? It's the same number. It's a 12. Okay. Um, so he just, he, let me demonstrate. And he throws this bull at you. And as it like flies out, you see this. And with your monk-like reflexes, you like neo dodge out of the way. And it stops above you and just falls. What? And you just get like crumpled to the ground. And he like goes over and he like straddles over your chest and like puts his hands on his knees and just like looks at you with this crazed like one eye's bigger than the other eye type, type of look. <laughs> he just like looks at you, his teeth are all gnarled. He's just like, <laughs> oh, what do you think? That was a neat trick. Shut <laughs> I wasn't speaking to you, and he points in. He points in a direction where you are not even there. He points like to a random ass corner of the room. I just look over there. I'm like, <laughs> that was sick as fuck. Huh? Yeah. I won't tell you the secret, but the secret is, <laughs> I, is I invented it. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Keep that in mind. Yes. And he like- For the rest of my life. <laughs> he uh, like steps over you and then he grabs onto like the middle of the bulla. And as he like squeezes his hand, uh, the weight gets like lifted and he just holds it up. Before you were not able to move. This thing was so heavy, it weighed you down. I just stay there, I just- Ah, with this bad baby, mwah, I will finally conquer the demons and become demon. Myself. Oh, oh, that is quite the uh, the title you're going for. It's uh, quite the goal. <laughs> he is just he just needs the buffer. <laughs> would you like? Uh, you notice like a, he's not even breathing at this point. Okay, I kind of sit up. Um. Oh, oh, I am sorry. No, uh, no, no, and no. she like scrambles oh, off to the side and grab grabs what looks to be a syringe and. Oh, what? Ha! Demon Lord is a nice one to do. Demon Lord Guile. Hmm. Yes. Uh, so what and was... then I will take over the hells, and then all guard will be next, and I will destroy him for making me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we actually came here for some of your, um, your wisdom, your ceaseless intelligence. Uh, we did. Uh, the thing that we're wanting to kind of talk to you about, um, we were, uh, you were suggested to us uh, to be sought out for your advice. Uh -huh. um, we plan to- I give great advice. I once gave an entire good. speech for three days straight. Nice. Really? Yeah, you see Sudi, she just- uh, Fond memories of such an event I see. Such, <laughs> you just... such grandeur and wisdom. I have the whole town captivated. Sir, mm, you were naked. <laughs> oh, I, was, I was wearing clothes the entire... So that's why you were arrested. I was never arrested. I am an upstanding citizen. Oh. <clears throat> Most of the time. Hey! We've all been there. Been where? Never mind. Oh, yes! I've always wanted to go there. It's the same. Mm. So, um... We're just all... He, start, he like, walks over to, like, the black limb demon who, at this point, seems to be, like, uh, coming conscious again. And he just starts, like, looking over it and just um, takes out, like, a notebook and starts, like, writing stuff down. So, a uh, question for you. A couple, actually, if you don't know, uh, if you don't mind, if you do not mind. Mm -hmm. I, I have, mind, I yes. Donuts. Okay, cool. Um, so, <laughs> this black one demon that you've got. Yes, is this I a... named it Rudy. Rudy? Rude. Rude. That's the one. Wow. Rudy. No, Rudy. That's the one. Rudy. Yes, correct. Rudy Rude. Ah, yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah. It's so My nice God. to meet someone who's so alike in mind. Yes, yes, yes. It was, it was so getting boring hard. with just the two of yes. us. See, oh, are you, are you, are you artificers of yourself? Are you? Unfortunately no. not. Really? Because you we, seem like you would be so smart from wherever no, you came from. No, we just come up with really dumb ideas to try. 
And that's why we wanted to come talk to you. That's why we wanted to come talk to you. Actually, wisdom. Ah, yes. wisdom. But it has to do with the the demons. Ah, yes. Uh, Is this a new addition to your collection, or has he been here for a while? Uh, Well, he's my newest addition, yes. So you've captured one? The other ones are locked away, and we don't talk about them. Okay, you won't. What are we talking about? I don't know. Oh, would you like to see the ones that I've locked up? No. I think no, we were just talking I, about that. That's, that's, that's okay. Are you sure? I was making a joke. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh my god. Okay, so, oh, um, we have plans uh, because these Blackland de- demons have been attacking the town and you know, if, if they keep attacking the town, then there's not really going to be a whole lot of space for you to continue doing your work, you know? So what we're thinking is we are going to lay siege to the what the raised fortress where they are holed up. Do you have any sort of uh, information or uh, tips or tricks that you can give us about the demons or about how we may be able to combat their uh, demonic forces? Tea, Sudi. Thank you. Oh. And the sandwich. Ooh, and those little biscuits that you make too. Thank you. Or, Actually, make that three. Not for them. Um, or can I also say, is there any like invention or like gadget that you ooh, think I'm an inventor. that needs tested out? <sighs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. There's one. I've needed a humanoid subject. For the longest time. Sudi has always said no. I don't know why. I can do it. What? Mm. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, you are amazing. You are. <laughs> um, he just like oh, grabs your no. wrist and like drags you over to one of the corners of the room and he just like yeah. swipes no. off one of the workbenches. Hop up here, big boy. Hop up. Hey, down. <laughs> I just leave. He just like slams your head into, like, <laughs> poof, into the table. All right. Okay. Very good. Yes. Now the vitals should be here, <laughs> here, here. You really should be marking this down. Where did I leave that pencil? <laughs> there's, a pencil there's a pencil right She's here. She's sitting here. with Ambrose, like looking, and I lean over and I go, "Is this what it was like? What was like for you? For me? Being with me? Is this what it's like?" That's what it's still like. And he just pats you on the shoulder and continues watching. <laughs> uh, I, so. just, I just do the... <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So, have you ever had any dealings with explosives? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Then you will like this. See, I'm trying to come up with some sort of... Uh, non-harming explosive that you can use in close quarters that does no significant damage to the user or wielder. Okay. Wielder is a better term. Color, Write that color, down. Color, he color, points color. out to this, some random corner of the room again. Color me intrigued. <laughs> color me intrigued. Keep going. Mm, yes. So we're going to strap this to you. And he like turns around and just picks up from the ground just what looks to be a stick of dynamite. And he grabs some like adhesive and just <laughs> straps it to your arm. Oh wait, that's the red one. What's the blue one? And he like turns around and he just like cannot find it anywhere. <laughs> well, I think that should be the right one. All right, ready to test it out. Psh, lights a match. I, I, I might be a little you know, too smart for you, but I do need human, uh, what are they? Consent. An uh, agreement. Consent. Verbal agreement. No, we don't need any of that paper. Just verbal agreement that you are okay with this. Hmm? I'm a witness. <laughs> Thank you. And he points off to like, just know where you are. Yeah. Well, I just want, I want to make this blatantly clear that what Jamie just saw is I was like, in my head, I was like, evens, I'll do it. Rules a natural 20. He starts so, getting the match closer as he just like looks over to you. Yes. Whenever. This shouldn't kill us all. <laughs> and he just, his eyes are locked onto the spark as he's just watching it go down, down, down. Um, at this point, like, Sudi, like, walks back in with, like, a tray of, like, tea, <laughs> sandwiches, like, everything he asked for. No! And she walks in, she goes, that's not the right one! And 
and she woo, platter goes everywhere and she runs over and just with her bare hand just stops it. And he, he just, he's, he's still like watching and just like waiting for it to tick down and it's just nothing happening. And he's just like fixated by the stick of dynamite. Sir, you, you specifically told me the red ones go big boom, the blue ones do not. And he just doesn't even, he doesn't even register that she is there. <sighs> just swap it out, I don't think you're thinking about this. I, need to, I don't even know where it is. Ah, oh, fuck. Boom! Oh. Why did nothing happen? Hello? So I was about to lose an arm? No, 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 that's not... What happened to you? You seem to have lost time. You put the, uh, you put the wrong one on there. Red one go, kablooey. Blue one go, not that. Yes, how did you know that? Do you know what the blue one is? Thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm, mayhaps, perchance, the probability of it happening, non-zero. Definitely, Maybe, possibly, threw it very far into the mouth of a Ghidorah. Is it alive? Maybe. Is it dead? I don't know. Are you talking about the possibly the one that I killed earlier today? You, you slew one? Yeah, I took off all three of its fucking heads. You slew a couple of the small ones too. Ah, that brings me to my next point. <laughs> he, he like, foof, goes back over to the Black Limb Demon. <sighs> I have devised a genius, genius invention, which you, he points over to Ambrose, not you, has so lovingly tested out, thank you. Um, so this device, and he holds up the bola, it can seek out your enemies. And once, they are trapped. They are locked in an iron cage that is unbreakable. Interesting. Yes. What would you say is the likelihood probability stuff of us uh, maybe acquiring one of those? Of your genius bowl inventions? Well, you're in luck. I have many of them. Oh. How many you got? He slides off like a curtain, just whoo, and there's just like stacks of them. Ta-da! How many Ooh. are you willing to part with? Well, well, you've already paid me, so you are a guest here. So <laughs> as a parting gift, I'll give you them. How many? But you must do me a favor first. What do you need? First, I want to see that one go off. I just want to see what happens, please. He's pointing the, the dynamite bottom. that's strapped on Warren's arm. But the, please, this, this one. Was I called... just need to know what happens. The but blue they, one. This... I just need to know. But this one. I but... just need to know. But the blue. I. What if we light just it and know. throw it? I. Blue. I, well, I will it's do it not... with the blue one. Oh, well, we still don't know if the blue one actually works. That one does. I just need to know. I just need to. I just gotta see what happens. If I find you the blue one, will you do that one instead? Uh, fine. Ah, so, um, yeah, one for you, and one for you, one for you. He just holds it out and drops it. Oh, no one's what? there. <laughs> hmm. Let's see, that was one, two, skip a few. I'll give you two more each, there you go, I'll have that. Can we get a couple for our buddies? We got two more. We have compatriots in the woods. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> no one here has friends. Stop. So, <clears throat> anyways, now you have to do me a favor. You must spread the word of Guile's inventions, the saint of war, the demon. No, nope. lord of demons. Oh, it, shit. Sudi? 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 No, that's not my name. Oh, oh. <laughs> I just, just, I just, listen. I just need 
to get into the Iron Watches. Yeah. And my life is complete. You know what? If these inventions work out really, really well, we could probably put them in a good room. We'll yeah. be like, guess who can create such amazing and immaculate weapons for you guys to use? And then you can be their weapon stealer. Imagine the arms master. The guys, the arms, arms master. master. Yes. Arms master guy. <laughs> God, just imagine that title and you just being able to sit there and just with and I all of this weaponry. The That's new god I, of destruction. Oh. And I will overthrow all god. I'm coming for you next. So, <clears throat> so that's all I need from you. And you can have them for free. You already have them in your hands. You just... <laughs> Seems simple enough. Yeah. yeah. I'll make sure to find that thick of dynamite. Yeah, we got to find the, the blue, blue one. one. In fact, I'll give you back your gold if you do. I think that sounds even. In fact, I think that's pretty generous of Michael, don't you think? Significantly generous, yes. Yes. Very. Yes. 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 yes, obviously. Okay. We'll, we'll take a look around. Yeah, we'll look around. Mm. We'll start looking. <laughs> look at the blue button now. Go ahead and uh, make a investigation check to find that. Um, that's yeah. intelligence. Fuck. It is intelligence. Fuck. Ten. Nineteen. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Uh, with a nineteen, as you are like scanning around this clusterfuck of a fucking um, workshop, um, you would at some point just like find this crate of miscellaneous just junk okay. at the very bottom, gathering dust. It <laughs> looks to be like. Another stick of dynamite, but this one looks blue. The fuse, very short. I don't say anything when I mm. find it. I just kind of like take it and then I act like I'm still looking around and I go over to Sudi. Is this the right one? Yes. Where'd you find that? Digging bombs. Uh, yeah, that was one of his first inventions, so. Uh... Just be careful. Huh? Don't strap it onto you for, for the love of all the gods. Okay. Throw it very far away when you can. I don't know what it does exactly. I don't. I, 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 I re- on it. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you right now. I have no idea what that one does. The red one is just a regular stick of dynamite. Can I smell it? Sure, okay, yeah, you guys smell it. This smells just like chemicals. It doesn't smell like gunpowder. <coughs> hey, two bucks. <laughs> That's what I just heard. Hey, two bucks. I'm sure it's fine. We'll, we'll test it out later. What do you want to know what happens? So we take them outside the move. But what did he say that it was specifically uh, was? Um, uh, hey, Guile. Master Guile. Thank you. you Arms have... dealer Guile. Oh! Yes. Do you have... Do you have uh, some sort of uh, container that could be set on the floor in order to prevent a possible detonation from destroying all of your beautiful work? No. Hey, Sudi, is is there anything like that in here? <laughs> you know, like a. Oh, are you are so you're looking for is like there something that can go over <laughs> it so that it doesn't fucking <laughs> everywhere. You're in luck. I've actually made something like that. Uh, um, she would come over, and it's just like almost like a stone, like bulky stone cup, I guess. Okay. Or bowl. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna take it. I'm gonna go over to like the center of the room. And I'm gonna set it down. The blue dynamite? Yeah. Okay. What? Don't In- mind us. We're idiots. Uh, Guile at this point is like, he like, does a double look and- You wanna come light this bad boy? What do you have to do there? What is that? That's the blue dynamite that you were talking about. You've made blue dynamite? I found it. No, he's really smart. Oh, you must show me more. I could learn from a thing like you. 
Right. <laughs> I, I look at I look at Orion, <laughs> and then I look at Ambrose. <laughs> Are you going to lie bit? Um. Okay. I'm not doing that. You're not lighting it? I'm... No, I just looked at the two of them and then I look back at Guile. Oh, Guile, okay, no, I, I thought just, you were looking at Ambrose. Because he said a thing like you and I just look yeah. at my two buddies and then I just turn back to, you gonna light that? And then we put it in. Let's do it. And he lights a match on his teeth, just. Hey. <laughs> and then step back real fast once you light it, okay? One for the money, two for the show. And it's time to let it go. <laughs> you just... Immediately, <laughs> boom. Ah, that usually works. <laughs> After he does that, <laughs> your hands boom, go flying as this stone bowl just boom, just goes flying up in the air, and the room becomes filled. You know what elephant toothpaste looks like? Yeah, it's almost exactly that. It's like foam, like really, really thick foam. Mm -hmm. Just, and all of you are either stuck or thrown back. In fact, make me a strength saving throw. I can do that. Yes, I can. Will I be proficient in strength? I don't know if I'm proficient in strength. Uh, not so. a saving no. throw, not for not you. A That's you're, a, you're dex and wisdom, I think. I'll say That's an 18 plus seven. Okay, good, very good. Hey, what's my favorite number? Eight. Whoa! No. No, it's eight. Eight? Yeah, eight's my favorite number. Oh, okay, very That's, cool. But right now it's my least favorite. Very wonderful. So, you get tossed back and just <laughs> just hit the side of the stone wall and cartoonishly just <laughs> fall down. Uh, you will take... Uh, four points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Uh, Ornan, uh, you... You don't take any damage as you kind of like withstand it, but you are like engulfed in this. So you're like considered restrained right now. And Guile, the same thing, gets thrown back along with um, Ambrose. And they just, oh. and as he like hits the wall, uh, you hear, and he has like metal wristbands on that like attach himself to the wall and start like dragging him up and starts like spider climbing up. And now he's like on the roof, just kind of like hanging there. And he's like in a daze and he's <laughs> And just, Sudi is already off to the side. So she was not in the blast radius. Are you just uh, hanging around? <laughs> hey. And he just immediately falls asleep. I would like to take out. <laughs> you are restrained right now. Oh, you're so right. Yeah. Uh, um, hey, Sudi. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Um, no give look. me a moment. And she How starts long? like digging through stuff. <laughs> um, a few moments later, she would grab like a vial and she goes over and pours it on and all of it just <laughs> dissolves away. <clears throat> that was Fucking crazy. So can that blue then just fucking restrain and just drop? Where can we find more of this? I go to the box. I, I, supposedly he had more. Do I know where it's at? Can we keep no. I don't know where anything's at in this place. Can we, it was a miracle I found that. Can we dig around for a little bit? Just to try to find some, he's out um, cold. Um, you see like she nervously like starts looking around and she's trying to process like, it, this seems bad, but she doesn't know. So make a persuasion check. I'm already digging into the box I was in before. Okay. 15? Um, okay, yeah, just be careful with what you touch. I don't know what can go off in any moment I, in this place. I promise I'll be so careful. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. <laughs> no. <laughs> sure, make an investigation check, both of you. Box. No. Unnatural point. Ten. Okay. No. 
there is no one place that you find these things. In fact, after finding it in the box and not seeing it again, you see that there are many different crates and boxes just littered with junk. And every time you dig through one of them, one stick of this blue dynamite is found at the very, very bottom collecting dust. So you would be able to find three more of these blue dynamites. What? Yep. Oh no. How many more? Three? three. Yeah. At this point, uh, the black limb demon would... I go, bah! <laughs> like, I'm gonna grab the wrench thing. <laughs> As you do that, um, you just see oh <laughs> Guile no, just <laughs> drop on yeah. top of the black limb demon and uh, you see his uh, goggles like zoom in and he's now like inspecting this thing. And even it's like, as it's like alive and like its hands and like feet are like thrashing around and so is its head. It just, he just like grabs onto this thing's head and starts like inspecting it, like opening up its eyelids, like trying to like lift up its nostrils, opening its mouth. And this thing with all of its might is trying to like stop him from like touching it. And he just seems to have like unimaginable strength, just easily being like, open up. <laughs> <laughs> um, and th there's nothing to, that this thing can do to like stop him. And he's just now just going doctor mode on this thing. Just mad doctor. Uh, so cool. I, I wonder what happens. I'm about to you, go get healed and yeah. not to prepare for yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. You hear chink, 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 and from that like same wristband, um, a like scalpel just into his palm of his hands and he just, you bleed. <laughs> and with his crazed look in his eye, you see the scalpel like start like going for like the cheek of this creature. And at this point, this creature is terrified of this man and is like looking Rightfully at him and screaming so. out in terror. And as it tries to like, like knock the scalpel away with just one hand, he just pushes this, pushes this jaw back down in this like this table. And he just slowly brings the scalpel into the cheek of this thing and like digs it in there, twists it once, brings it out nothing. This thing doesn't bleed. He just goes. What's it taste like? Flavorful. <laughs> like as if you've eaten the first meal your mother ever prepared for you. Okay. Despicable. <laughs> he throws it away. Hmm. So you don't bleed but you're restrained easily. Maybe it's because your limbs, well, you can act separately. And he like, um, this table, and he goes over and like slaps the side of it and it just <laughs> breaks apart and all of his limbs easily just pop out. Hmm. You can still move while you're not attached. So how? How do I kill you I'm easily? Just, I'm just watching. Is there anything you guys want to do? I'm just, I'm watching. <laughs> We're watching. Things. I'm letting him cook. Okay, okay. I'm just, I'm like seeing where he's going with it. Yeah, I'm like, okay, Guile. What? <laughs> yeah. He may be a little bit insane, but I'm like, hey. So. Keep going. Outward pressure doesn't do anything when you take it apart. What if I put you back together real hard? And he slaps like the side of the table again and <clears throat> goes back together. And then he goes over and like starts twisting this knob. And the bands, the like iron bands start <clears throat> getting tighter and tighter and tighter. These things, this thing's arms start like going into its chest and its legs as well start like morphing together. And it gets so tight, and this thing is like screaming out still. Yeah. It gets morphed into one thing. Its arms and its legs just And it's now just a stick with a head. And you can see all it's moving is like the bottom part and its head. It cannot move anything else. A fascinating discovery. I must keep this hidden from everyone. And <laughs> he just woof. That's crazy. You're not blind, are you? Mm. No, and I would like to keep it that way. Wonderful. 
That concludes today's... Stop it. Thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you for having us. Oh, of course, of course, of course. I hand him a book. Ah, wonderful. You're so generous. <laughs> <laughs> I need that. So, come back anytime. I really enjoyed having... Company? No, that's not the right word. Ah, a physical manifestation of the voices in my head. Thank you. Thank you for showing yourselves today. It's been so long. I've really missed you. Next time, though, just keep it down a little bit, yeah? <laughs> oh, cool. You yes. got it. Thank you. Well, we have- We'll go now. So nice getting to talk to you again. Yes. Truly we will enlightened see, us. See you later. Yeah. Keep coming up with crazy ideas. So I thought you were blind. I didn't think you could see. You're so right. Can you show us to the door? <gasps> no. <laughs> he, just, he turns around and he starts like tinkering with other stuff. And Sudi just... It's... We know where the door Okay. Thank okay. you so much. You're welcome. Good. It was so nice meeting you. Good yes, fucking you. walk. Yes, um, you are doing the gods work. Ooh, ooh, I, I don't think I got your names. Oh my gosh, I'm so You're just kind of strangers here. Yeah, well, we're, we're part of a group. Oh, we're called the Seekers. Seekers. Okay. Uh, we're here to help with the Black Lagoon problem. Okay. Um, However, I am Macau. And Macau. I am Ornan. 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 Ambrose. Yes, I'm going to that. Nice to meet you all. I. I apologize for his behavior. You know what? It was refreshing. It was. We've been dealing with way too many serious people as of late. Yeah, this was kind true. of needed. Just a little bit. But now I am a bit grateful for the yeah. seriousness. Yeah. Um, you are very interesting. I'm so glad you survived this encounter. Yeah. If you need anything else, you know where to find us, but um, I sh yeah. sure hope we're not your last resort. Okay. Oh. No, last resort, no, I'm just saying. I d no, that you do, uh, that boosts his ego and you don't want to do that. Okay. Oh, okay. Got the, got the, got the, got the, got the first resort. All right. Take care, please. Yes, we'll do you as well. I just, I go, I'm so short. I go, born in, and everyone's like, go, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, And as you guys are like uh, walking back up, you hear like the screams of the, the black limb demon before, and then just, <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's so funny. Stop. <clears throat> um, as you guys are like walking back up the stairs, uh, Ambrose is like, did any of you see what I see? See what I saw? Uh, no, 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 not that. Um, it might have something to do with this. Um, he pulls out the piece of Syphix. Oh, what? Did you not see the tip of his horns? And as no. you're like thinking back to it now, the tip of his horns were not made of like horn Did material, like bone. The very tips of his horns were made out of like two pieces of Syphix, and they were attached to his horns. That's fucking crazy. And Ambrose was like, I, I picked it up immediately. I, I, I was so, crazy. So he is a fucking, a crazy genius. Yeah, but I don't, I have this thing like in my backpack or pocket, you know, and like it does have some influence on me. That and shit's on him. Especially when like when, like tailoring, you know, that's how I was able to make Marjorie's boots so bad. I wonder if that's why he is as crazed yeah. as he is. As like constantly wearing a piece of yes. side fake. And it's n it not only attached, but you can, you're never away from it. That's. Yeah, that's a lot. Uh huh. Um, anyways. That. Hmm. Don't turn up like him, please, and thank you. Like I said, it just kind of helps me with tailoring. Yeah. yeah. Um, whatever he's doing, I think there's some other things that are influencing yeah. that. Yeah. Um, you know, at least we 
we learned something and got some useful stuff for free. Mm -hmm. yeah. My arm almost got exploded off, but... That was a really stupid. dumb move. I just yeah. want to point that out. Yeah, I would like to... Hey, and I'm I, saying I, that I, as well. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on. Ornan, have you okay. ever seen dynamite before? I've seen explosions. Okay, okay yes. Oh. Have you seen the device that caused the explosions? Not, not magic. Not magic, mind you. An actual thing that makes things explode. It's like a bomb, but it's cylindrical and small. I'm tired now. Okay, we'll, we'll go get some rest. But Ornan, uh, yeah, that thing that you had on dynamite? Survived. No one in that room would have survived. Yeah, no, we would have been dead as fuck. I wish I was in the forest. Well, one... now I know for next time. Yes, now you know for next time. Yeah. Don't do that. I won't do it again. Thank you. My, You're welcome. My brain hurts. Let's... I know, all that thinking was so much for you, huh, big boy? And, <laughs> and he, like, pushes you up the stairs and you guys would exit. Mm, that's the fuck. Yes, can we go see the healer and or sleep? Yep. Let's Good go. rest now. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, you guys would make your way back to uh, I still got the, the grove or the center of Nasal um, oh. with quite a few of these strange bolas <laughs> and a few sticks of blue dynamite which released this uh, restraining chemical. How the fuck is that boy? B-O-L-A? Yep. yep. All right, team forest. Team trees. Gene cream. So, you guys would take a rest. You would be healed fully from the healers if you so choose to go to them. Um, is there anything you guys want to do before heading out into the Brookbond Forest? I'm not injured, so... Yeah. All healed up. Ready to get lost? Yeah, let's lose ourselves, find ourselves <laughs> something. Yeah. Any pit stops along the way? Not that I can think of. Just hope I don't have to use any spells, because I'm... I'm gonna dry. Yeah, same. I'm not out. I've got a little bit, a little bit of juice. <sighs> and I can restore some. Ugh, the gods be in our favor. Are we bad, Juice? Do you think Osuka knows anything about this? Probably. This beer? Yeah, no. Let me double check my gods, make sure I remember who is who. Because I never remember, and I mix up my own gods. Oh, Shunta is the goddess of agriculture. And no, it's not the one we want. Um, well, we want to go, if anyone, I would say. Go okay. life? Life oh. for spirit? Mm. That or Kaiser. Go is the god of nature. Kilo, maybe. Or maybe Fane. Wildlife? I don't know. Um, There's a lot of options. <sighs> oh. There's a lot of gods. <sighs> hmm. Religion check advantage for me. Run now. <laughs> Run! With advantage. Well, the advantage was useless because I rolled way worse the second time. I feel like Fane would heal. Uh, 13. 13's enough. I'm gone. Fane might be your best bet for this thing. That's what I was... Yeah, the more I kept going to the list, it was like, it, Spirit was either going to be it's actually just like dead and Ke Kaiser or Fane because wildlife. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I want to go into the forest and pray to Fade. <sighs> Sounds riveting. It no. is. Yeah, we haven't had it. Not even just us two. Interesting. 
Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I think they're all right. I can still sense their life energy. I don't. Uh... No, I don't take it. <laughs> sure. Make me <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah, well, make here we are. Fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> you said make me Shit, fuck. <laughs> Um, I guess that is something that I would have to probably like roll and focus on instead of it just being like ah, dead dead alive alive dead dead I would don't move please thank you I would accept a arcana check um (laughs) arcana Arcana. Yeah. Fuck. And things about the Why do you guys hate making more content checks? You know, let's that. make this a different check. Because it's intelligence, and none of us are intelligence based. Ambrose. But Ambrose is always in, in your inventory. Yeah, so. but he's also a warlock, so he's technically a charisma caster. That's my yeah. point. So You're I'll do this you. since this this is. I'll, I'll say this will be like a special feature for you if you want to. Yeah. Go I'll ahead. Do charisma check since you are a charisma caster plus proficiency. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, it's so just a charisma save. Okay. Oh, wait, this might be interesting. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I got really excited for a moment. Understand. Homeboy was praising the Lord. Praising, praising the gods, the blooming gods. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the blooming gods. <laughs> the blooming gods. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, oh. first three. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> Deceased. Ladies and gentlemen, Vasilian. Oh, Vasil. Vasil. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Vasilas. <laughs> In a jar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Lord Juice Vasilian. <laughs> We're drinking I, juice, a lot of juice. <laughs> it's it's thick and creamy. <laughs> <laughs> I want you dead. I want you deceased. I want you dead. That feels so good. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. I'm so glad he did my grapes. I'm so glad he didn't erase the doodle on the whiteboard. No, of course I wouldn't. <laughs> <gasps> All right. Go ahead. You know, my first instinct was just throw this out. <laughs> <laughs> that's my, okay, that's my friend. <laughs> that that is my friend. Yes. 14. Is 14. enough to pass. <clears throat> you are being influenced. 14 is enough to pass. 14 is really good. Fourteen was a godsend. Plot armor. I'm gonna okay. swallow that. I guess. Plot armor. Plot armor. <laughs> I am very important. <laughs> 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 I'm kind of a big the deal. gods <laughs> have deemed it, and it passed. <gasps> Sheesh! Because the gold, the gods rolled like shit. So, <laughs> puny gods. <laughs> no, not for me. Eve, you, after Dara asked, <laughs> I hope they're okay or whatever you said, you focus for a second. You, like, yeah, I can feel their life energy. And when you really hone in on trying to grasp that feeling that you had when you felt your son's life energy still on this biosphere. You close your eyes, take a deep breath, you plant your feet into the sturdy ground, and you expand your awareness. Dara, you would see this. As you're looking at Mirage, her gears tattooed on her glow and start to move. You feel lighter, Eve. And as you take like a deep breath in, 
you feel it hit your chest, just <gasps> two, three life energies. You'd feel it. They are safe. They are feeling intrigued is what you get from this. But they are safe. They are still here on the biosphere and they are not in danger. Hmm. After that, after you get this sense of um, comfort from knowing that these comrades of yours are still alive, you slowly let it dissipate and those gears would stop glowing and stop moving and you are kind of brought back to reality. Okay. Well... Okay, they're doing fine. That's what you got from that? Yeah. <laughs> you well, started glowing and your gears were moving. You're like, yeah, they're good. Well, it's better that, you know, they're fine. I mean, I agree, but what the hell? Oh, I guess if I could focus real hard, I could, I could sense whose life energy still remains in the biosphere. At this point, what um... The fuck? You would okay, just... Friendly be able to sense someone is staring at you and as you kind of like look around you see Nikoa wide-eyed and just staring at you from like 20 feet away just like a little kid yeah. looking up and seeing the, his role model come to life or like a superhero right in front of him just and then like slowly he like walks up to you and I've heard. I've heard of you. Oh? You. Go ahead and roll a history check for me with advantage. Yeah. I'll take the nat 20. <laughs> you, all of a sudden, as you're gazing into this gnome's eyes you remember long time ago when Dion was still guiding you one of his tasks was to go help a small village in a forest and as you go there you're remembering this there was a family of gnomes who were being attacked by bandits and you went in there and wiped out the bandits and you remember seeing this young gnome look up at you with like tears in his eyes and you just remember the family profusely just thanking you for saving them and you turn away and leave you disappear fade into nothingness but this gnome remembered you even though one of your greatest abilities was to be forgotten, no one would remember you. This one did. Oh my god. So Nakoa looks at you, and you just, that memory floods you, and tears start streaming down his face. You saved me and my family so long ago. I didn't recognize it at first. I didn't realize who you were. But I, I felt it. That power that you have now. Something about it, it's... strong. I don't know how else to describe it, it's... Sorry. <laughs> this power is resonating with something special within you. I remember you. And I remember you. 
I wish I was more like you. Brave. You took on not only those bandits, but all these demons. Without a second thought. I'm not like that. I wish I was for the sake of everyone else, but... How do you do it? Um, I'm like from when you saw me before. I'm not traveling alone anymore. I... You know, I faced death myself. But people keep believing in me. I've shown weakness in front of my friends many times. I've had... I've had my powers sealed away, and I remembered what it was like to be powerless. To shoot nothing but dust from my fingertips. And... But you just have to keep living. You realize that you're not just fighting for yourself anymore. And... I got a whole biosphere counting on me. The weight of the world is on your shoulders. Doesn't that scare you? Doesn't that... Aren't you fearful of every action you take? If, if everyone's counting on you? Like at any moment you could just go wrong. It horrifies me every day. But then I remember that Losing the people I care about and everything I've been fighting for, everything I've sacrificed going to, going to waste, that scares me a whole lot more. You see, um, I guess like a flash of like recognition or a moment of clarity in Nikoa's eyes. And he turns around and he looks directly at Brom, who is um, clasping a shoulder on the, uh, clasping a soldier on the back and like talking to them. And you can see all of them are like laughing and smiling despite everything that just happened. Brom is like raising morale where he can. And Nikoa looks over to him and looks like back at you. He just kind of like takes it all in for a second. I think I'm starting to understand. You travel with very wise people. And he looks over to you, Dara. That tiefling one scares me, though. I... yeah, that's understandable. Which one? Which one? The... the, the one with the... The leg? I didn't get that from the start, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to be rude. Um. <laughs> the monk. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah. Um. Talk to me. Thank you. Truly. I um. <laughs> I, I need some time to think. You've shown me something. I think I have a new perspective on my purpose and what I'm supposed to do. I'm still scared, though. It's okay to be scared. It'd be strange if you weren't. Agreed. Fear drives us. 
Yes, he does. I'm sorry, I won't take up any more of your time. I'm... Thank you. And he just kind of like turns around and like toddles off. Bring your heart beat with Marcus. You see him kind of like stop and kind of like look over his shoulder for a second. He starts nodding and then he just walks away. All right. Gods he had in mind. God, yeah, thank <laughs> well, Do you want to take a moment to ask him, or are you just wanting to, uh, you know, the less we know, the easier we can get lost? That one. I'm still held up on. Oh, yeah. It's uh, one of those kind of little things I've no. awakened to. <laughs> yeah, a little. False. <laughs> No, it, it, it is kind of a big deal. I shouldn't have turned it down. I learned no. that my son's life energy still remains, and uh, it's kind of a big deal. Yeah. You are a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, yeah. Let's, let's go. Let's go into the forest a little further. Yeah. And then we'll pray. And yeah. we'll see what comes of this. Yeah, get lost. Let's go. Get right. lost. Slash pause. Pause? No. POS. No oh. Piece of shit. Sorry. <laughs> Point of sale. Point of sale. The POS is some. Okay, so you guys exit the town of Nasal into the Brookbon Forest. You begin wandering around the forest, trying to, as they said, get lost in the forest. No, first I want to go into the forest and then seek Fan, and then I want to get lost. Understood. Before getting lost in the forest, you seek God. Go ahead and seek God. <laughs> Trust me, I've already been seeking God all week. I can do this. <laughs> Religion? Da. Ribbage. Religion or bidge? Uh, Ribbage. Religion. That'll do nice. 22. Yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. Can you stop stealing all of my rolls tonight, Devin? Let me have one good good night, fucker. Like, before getting lost, you seek God. And as soon as I did that, I accidentally hit the button that opens my emojis, and I went to, like, hit the quote button, and I just spammed two eyes. And I was like, "Ah!" (laughs) Terrifying. (laughs) He's everywhere. (laughs) Scared the fuck out of me. It was actually horrifying. I was like, oh, Jesus. Didn't like that. So, with the 22, how do you pray to the god of wildlife, Fane? <laughs> wildlife in the forest? Uh, I'm not wasting a wild tip because that's dumb and I need those. I am going to go out there and see if I can't... I regret this, but that's okay. If I can't find, like, either, like, a really chill animal unlikely, or like some kind of nest or hive and just chill around it. I'm laying up against a tree if I can. Sure. Just try and like seek out the wildlife. What do you want Eve to be doing then? Is there something specific? I would just have Eve follow suit. Okay. So both of you are like leaning up against a tree? Yeah. Sure. I think it's the best option. I've never really contacted the Okay. And you're just trying to wait until an animal like crosses you that seems chill mm-hmm. cool yeah see what i can do to get in contact easily enough as you're like sitting there maybe like 10 15 minutes would pass by as you're just kind of like meditating mm-hmm. and you would hear the slow soft footfalls of an animal and what you would see walking into view 
It appears to be a fawn. And it just walks right up to you and just kind of just stands there and looks at you. It's big deer eyes, spotted body, little deer ears. Okay. Make sure I got nothing in my hands. Just. Like, takes a moment, seems hesitant as it, like, sniffs your hand and then bows its head and then, like, nuzzles up to your hand. Too late. Mm-hmm. <sighs> well, I guess it's gonna get good a time as any. Oh, Fane. This time, I need your guidance. Yeah, okay. Silently. Almost as if he just appeared out of the green of the forest itself. Just fading into view, standing over you at like eight feet tall. He walks over the deer and he's just like towering over it. This deer is not phased. In fact, it is just kind of like still nuzzling your hand. You see what appears to be um, clad in like druid armor, I guess, like kind of like a green robe that's made out of like um, leaves and mix of leaves and cloth, I guess, um, is a humanoid figure. But the first thing you would see are two hooves. And as you like gaze up, you see this eight foot tall um, humanoid deer creature, almost like the great elk that you saw, almost exactly like that, but it's humanoid. He's got like a um, oval shield on him that is made of like wood, and it has like uh, vines that are like wrapped around it, um, beautiful leaves like adorn it as well. Um, he has like a staff that is made out of just like the most pure wood that you've ever seen. And it branches out at the very top ever so slightly. Um, he's got like nice sleek hair for being the god of wildlife. Um, and he has like the head of a deer and these great antlers um, on his head. He kind of has like, um, I don't exactly know what it's called. Like, I forgot, but it's like a circlet of leaves on his head. A laurel. That one, yes. A laurel. Um, and he just stands there and just looks down at you and gives you a smile. The, the, he has this divine presence about him but it's different to the other gods. Even though he is tall, he is shaped like a humanoid deer. This seems like a very fatherly figure, very comforting to you. He shows no disdain, no anger, no malice, nothing. This seems very pure. It's different from Tagalm as well. And as he just kind of like looks down upon you and offers you this gentle smile, he kneels down to the fawn and just kind of like uh, rubs his hand along its neck and back and it like turns around and looks up to him and he just, and now, now little one, your mother will be frightful if you ran away from here. So why don't you, why don't you go on back? Yes. And it kind of just like acknowledges him by looking up and like blinking and just like trots away and then he like kneels down to where he's almost eye level to you he's still pretty tall but he kneels down to like one knee and just like puts his arm over and just like looks at you Dara and then turns over and looks at you Eve you called upon the father of the forest I uh, yes <laughs> There's no need to be anxious, child. You say that. You're the third one today. This is a lot. Mm. I just rest my hand on on her shoulder. You have a strong connection to the gods. Yeah. Mm. Um. I can see why. And he, like, looks down at you, um, and he gazes over to where you would keep Bloom. 
Ah. She has a strong heart, Dara. Thank you. I do my best to take care of Bloom. You've done well. Anyway, um, I requested your presence today because I am on the hunt for a spirit of the forest who has not been seen for a very long time. Ah. I see. Yes, the spirit of a forest is an old friend of mine. But it seems he's gone into hiding as of late. After everything happened with the Ironwood Forest, he blames himself for what happened. He carries malice in his heart, anger. Mostly towards himself, but unfortunately he's put it on others. The trees have Well, they have been waiting for him to return. Gone into a deep slumber since his parting. If you truly want to find the spirit of the forest, you must become one with your surroundings. What I keep hearing. Like. I cannot tell you how to find him. If he does not want to be found, he will not. But. You. You have a. Presence about you. Truthful and. I can sense it. But the spirit of one lost, her connection resides within you. Focus on that. Okay. And together you may yet find the spirit of the forest. You, Eve. Hmm. You have a strong connection to not just the gods, but the ones above them. You intrigue me, and I have lots of questions for you, but it is not the right time. Perhaps another day. I look forward to it. As do I, Eve. As do I. Eve, if you can use that power, and he kind of gently, like, presses his fingers to your tattoos, and he looks at them with genuine curiosity, you... might be able to sense him. It will be difficult, but perhaps this would be a challenge for you. A way to hone your abilities, yes? Yeah. The spirit of the forest is not one being. I guess I shan't do. <laughs> I have created many things in this biosphere. The spirit of the forest is one of them. His purpose was to be able to make friends with the trees. I wanted him to never be alone. With this, I granted him the power to 
expand his... Well, I guess you could call it his body. To everything around him. What you're standing in. Most of the Pokemon Forest itself has a piece of the spirit of the forest. That is why you must lose yourself. Become one with the surroundings. Expand your senses. Take everything in. If you can truly do this, without anything else hindering your senses, you will find him. And he will help you. But I warn you, again, it will not be easy. And it might take some convincing if he is to help you. Stay true. Hmm? He stands up. Hmm. What a wonderful day. He turns around. <laughs> he departs into the forest. I couldn't. Wonderful. I couldn't what if I killed you? I couldn't help wonderful myself. Indeed. And cut. I couldn't help myself. The end. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I contained myself. And you couldn't. I, I couldn't. You're right. You are better than I. It's okay. Because you were like, saying, you're like, father, good, kind. I never had that. I don't know what a dad without malice is. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 <laughs> I looked at, I looked at Andrew and I'm like, <laughs> this is the perfect moment. <laughs> Say his words. Oh my god. Can y'all hurry up with your, your no. shit? Okay, so. A wonderful day indeed. Yeah. Yep. yep. Turns around and he he doesn't like fade out like some of the other gods kind of does. He blends in with the forest. Like as he walks, almost like if you're looking in 2D and it's like camouflage where he like takes a step and he becomes the forest. Like you can almost like for a moment you see his body and then the next moment your perception comes back and like his head and antlers have become like the branches of the trees and the leaves and like his arms become like the vines and the bark of the trees as well and you just becomes the forest. Sick. And his presence disappears. Whoa. What? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Where is today? I'm getting abused. Okay. Three guns. I'm trying to be a clown. A clown. <laughs> and then the spirit of the forest. Let's do this. Yeah. Well, he did suggest I use my power to find him, but so far I've only been able to do that by focusing on the faces of people that I know. Um, I suppose the trick is to just focus on the forest itself. Kinda. Yeah. I've got a couple of ideas, one that I've never tried before. Yeah. Yeah, I'm all ears. Well, I don't know if mine's gonna work for you, buddy. Well, I guess, <laughs> I guess I'll ever be out there, I'll meet you there. <laughs> Give him a moment, he's broken. He's broken. <laughs> what? I don't know. What? I, is my head okay? <laughs> the moment you're like, what the fuck is this? My brain immediately was like, it's DMD. <laughs> DMD. DMD. Yeah. I don't know why I thought that was so funny. Oh. I'm so sorry I ruined the moment. No, that was very. I think, hey, that needed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> you needed to get a little bit yeah. Okay. So we're back. back. We're immersed. Oh, god damn it. Okay. Well. 
So if you have a way that works for you, and I might have a way that works for me, I guess, I guess I'll meet you there. Yeah. No, I have no idea if this is gonna work. Huh? I might be missing the fucking mark, but we're gonna try. I'm curious. What do you have in mind? Um, pulling shit out of my inventory that hasn't been used ever. First off, it wasn't even ever added to my inventory, I don't think, but I. No, nope, there it is. <laughs> I know, it sounds goofy. However, it kind of makes sense. Hey, you might find it. A spear might find it amusing. I don't know if I'd find it amusing, but... Well... It's a I was told what to do. You're gonna get its attention either way. Mm. It's you can't really... Uh, <laughs> you can't really ignore... No. ...that. It's fine. You know what? I haven't seen this in action. No one has. It's well, literally... Well, yeah, no, it's close enough to accurate. Get on with it already. What is it? I want to go find some kind of vague clearing. Flowers or something. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna sit. No. Stop. Yeah, I can sit. I had to think about that. Okay. I'm gonna pull a very large thing off of my back that's been here for 70 fucking years that I've never used that I'm proficient with. Bagpipes. Okay. I have a reason. All right. Sure. I'm listening. Before she passed, Aldira wrote a song. I'm going to play its tune. Because I was told to focus on my connection to her. Mm -hmm. Again, I might be missing the mark, but that's what I've gathered. Okay. Okay. Roll me nature. Nature? Yeah, you said you need it. Fuck. I'll give you advantage. It couldn't be performance. Are you proficient in performance? <laughs> no, but I got more and I'm proficient with my tools. <laughs> if you want more performance, you can. Yeah, I've got a higher roll for that. Okay, you done instead then. Woof. I hope you know how to find That's best. not good. Oh, the plus five, that's a 13. And advantage. Okay. <laughs> you do play this song perfectly. And it's beautiful. But as you're playing you try to remember the connection you have to Aldira, the things she did, how in tune she was to nature herself. You go back and you try to remember your time wandering her homeland, being a part of the culture there, the nature, its surroundings, its landscape, you really do like immerse yourself in all these memories. And as you finish the song, you kind of forget about everything else going on outside the forest. This is where you are in the present. Nothing else seems to matter. You're almost there. You're close. What else can you do? I mean, if it would help, would it help knowing the fact that these have not been played since she was alive? That's why he keeps them. It doesn't help your role. Damn. But like I said, you're close. You're on the mark. You just need a little bit of something else. Guidance! 
<laughs> really don't have anything else without wasting abilities. They're not easy to come by. We'll come back to you. Eve. Okay. You part ways with Dara. Trying to lose yourself in the forest. What do you do? Okay. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna lie on my back. Just on the ground. Just mm-hmm. look straight up and since I typically am able to feel the life energy by like focusing on the face mm-hmm. of people, I'm like, I figure I just have to focus on the forest itself. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So you're trying to use your special feature again to kind of expand your awareness, but focus purely on the forest itself. Yeah. Sure. The environment and every like sensation. I'll allow it. Yeah, go ahead. Wall for ego death. All right. Uh, 18. Okay. You lie on your back and expand your awareness. Focusing not just on a person, but on the forest. That energy you felt from Ambrose, Macau, and Ornan when you focused on them. It's a similar but different feeling. You do feel everything around you is alive. There's a speck of life in all these different things. Not enough to animate them per se, but everything around you is alive. And as you focus on it, your awareness expands more and more throughout the entire forest. You sense some things that are not alive, but are moving, and their intentions are evil. And as you expand more and more and more, it's almost like you're viewing from like an eagle eye, looking down at the forest. The green of the canopies become this golden light as all of these specks start to form together that create one life. And as you're doing that, you feel your body start to sink. And at first, you believe it's just that weightlessness feeling that you had. Then as you start to open your eyes and kind of like relax your body, you realize that you're being dragged down into the ground. Vines have wrapped around you. You see beautiful flowers on all of them. They don't constrict you. They're like... It's a gentle, like, squeeze almost as they wrap around your body and then just meld you into the ground. And you just kind of, the ground covers your face and you feel yourself move through the earth. You can still breathe. You don't feel like this is evil. You're just allowing yourself to become one with the forest. And as you do, the ground would shift apart and your body is slowly like pushed up. And you're in this beautiful forest. There are large trees around you. You see an opening that there's like God rays coming down onto this crystalline pool of water. A gentle stream flows past your feet and you sense the life of this forest as one whole thing coming from this pool, or at least near it. And we'll stop you there and we'll go back to Dara. I really don't know what you want from me, but I have another idea. Mm-hmm. I'm sticking with what I've got. Okay. Um, 
but to kind of change gears here because I think I might have gone the wrong way. I might be going further the wrong way. We're going to find out. Instead of playing her song, I want to replicate almost the song of the forest itself. Play the whispering of the wind, the chittering of the insects and the animals, the scuff, the... the I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I get you. Sure, you can roll performance again. With and while I'm doing so, I just want to focus on that same thing like when I was showing Ornan, mm -hmm. that awareness of life around me. Yeah, absolutely. I'll give you that roll again with advantage since you were playing the bagpipes. Okay. That's significantly better. No, that's not. Uh, performance. 17. 17 does it. Yeah, so it was a 12 plus 2 plus proficiency. Mm -hmm. With the first song that you played, you already felt in tune to nature. But this pushed it over the edge. You begin to, or after you finish the first song, you realize nothing's happened. The memories of everything, much like Eve, of everything else outside the forest does begin to fade away. You do still, you begin to feel a much stronger connection to everything around you. But you still don't feel planted in this forest. That's when you start playing this other song. The sounds of a forest in the tune coming from Bagpipe. And as you do, you really start to focus on everything that you were saying. The wind coming through the leaves. The heat of the sun. The coolness of the shade. Footfalls of the different animals. Fluttering of wings. All of it comes together as one. And at that point in time, you feel yourself start to meld with the ground. There are no vines or anything that are grabbing onto you. Much like Fane, everything in like your perspective becomes you. And as you let yourself, your mind, your soul, and your body just kind of meld into this forest, the view in front of you would change. It would morph into what Eve saw. Large trees, crystalline pool in the center of like trees surrounding it, a bed of flowers, grass, green, the small creek flowing. And in front of you would be Eve. You feel that same energy, that same life of the forest coming from where this crystalline pool of water is. You guys are together. Welcome. You made it. <laughs> My goodness. So how long has it been since you played that bagpipe? You don't even know. No? Fair enough. Okay. Let's find us a spirit of the forest and hope. Yeah, pray for assistance. Okay. And you said there was a what? It, what did you what did we see? Like, like, what are we seeing? Oh, okay. So, uh, there's that pool of water, sun shining down on it. There are trees surrounding the pool of water. There's, like, green grass and just flowers all around it. Um, and there's, like, a little stream flowing between you and Eve. That's what you're seeing right now. Not over here. Okay. Then I am going to follow the stream up to the little pond. It's like a pool of water. Yeah, pool. it's a little bit bigger than a pond, but yeah. So as you guys walk through almost kind of like a gate of trees, I guess you could say, um, you walk through and enter this layer. And what you would see as you like step into this layer, 
forming again, much like Fane, just kind of out of the forest itself, covered in flowers. Its body is made of vines. Um, Dara, you know what this creature is, though you've probably not seen this exact type or kind. This creature that you see in front of you, standing on two sturdy legs made purely of vines. Its body um, extends up. It has two very long arms also made of vines. It has a head that has like a wooden mask that kind of like, it's like a mask on its head and then it has like curved horns coming from the mask that curl around the top of its head. It's got blue eyes on it. Um, you see what appears to be a moose eye in front of you. A creature purely made out of forest life. This thing though does not look like the moose eye that you met a while ago. I think it was back in Anduin, I believe. Yes, it was Anduin. This thing looks ancient. If you want to, you can either roll a history or nature check for me to discern what this is, Dara. Okay. Nature or? History, I'll accept either or. Mm. Surely I'm better at history than at nature. So that it. <laughs> sure, on that 20. This is an elder moose eye. Uh, these things from where you've come from, not efflorescence. These things are essentially like tribe leaders. These are the most powerful of the Musai. They are respected beings by um, the rest of like their tribe or clan. This one is completely alone, isolated in complete solitude. And as you see this thing kind of like morph out of the forest itself, um, you see it doesn't really like walk, but its bottom of its legs shift with the ground. And it does not disturb any of the nature. It just simply moves around everything. So it's a very weird... Uh, cadence that it has to his walk, I guess. And as you step again into this layer, this thing like raises up its hand and you see flowers begin to grow in its palm before it rests it down in a bed of dirt and the flowers become one with the ground below. And then it slowly cranes like its long viney neck just and looks over to the both of you. It kind of has like a hunched back and then it just kind of like slowly moves towards you. You see this thing is pretty tall. We're talking maybe like seven feet tall if it's standing at full height. But right now it's kind of like leaning over um, almost like on all fours at this point because its arms are so long it's kind of like on the ground. And it looks to both of you and it like cocks its head to the side, really observing the both of you. Looks you up and down. Greetings. As it speaks, I will kneel. Spirit of the forest. Seeing that Dara is kneeling a little. <laughs> You're like, oh no. <laughs> right. um, as you like kneel, and if you were to look back up to it, it would also like bow its head in respect. I am the spirit of the forest. How? How did you make it here? I sought connection with not only the forest, but my wife, who had a greater connection than I, via music. Music. found me. You are strange. 
but only one who is truly connected to nature could find this. And she like raises her um, viney like hands that extend to like tree branches and they sprout these beautiful flowers that just their petals start to like fall off and float around her. The heart of the Brookbond Forest. A beautiful sight indeed. My home for so long. So, comfort is far from this place. For I hide away from the evil that lurks around. But you are not evil. No. Why have you come? In response to said evil. The black limb demons. Unfortunately, yes. They've returned. But Uthgo slain. How? Another has I would assume sought to make a pact. Taking control. You've come asking for help. Yes. Why would you think I would help? Because this is your home and the last of the Iron Woods. Stand alone as you do now in this forest. We wish to prevent it from being the last forever. We want to carry its legacy into generations untold. And without your assistance, it will fall. (laughs) Hmm. Perhaps. The trees. My friends. I do not wish for them to find harm in battle. But I do not wish to see them all gone. Or I could still hide. Even if the Brookbond Forest is gone, there are others. And she like looks back up to you. There may be others. But you cannot replace the, the trees that you would lose. You cannot replace the last of the Ironwoods and those protectors who have stood here vigilant for as long as they can, trying to protect it, even after the betrayal of one. The Ironwood Watchers. Are they not also invaders of this forest? They They'll come be here. considered and... invaders at the end of the day, besides you. They seek to protect what is precious to them. But is that not also greed? For they seek to use the Ironwood Tree for their own gain. What about the rest of my friends? The others? Do they not care about those? I couldn't say definitively. I know I do. I've always stood as one to care for all of life. That's why I seek to try and preserve all of it for as long as I can, especially those hanging on to their last threads. Hmm. 
My only fear is that I know that the Ironwood will continue to be sought after and used for malicious ends. What of you, silent one? You come here, yet you do not speak. Do you seek something different? I seek the same thing as Dara. I've given my life to preserve the balance of the biosphere. And I've given a lot, and as of recent, I've come to recognize I have a much stronger connection with this world, with you, and every other tree here. Mm. Like, I don't know, maybe it's just the mom instinct in me. Mom. But I want to make sure that I can protect you and everyone else, too. Mm. And these are good people. They've made me mistakes, but I mean, that's just life, is it not? continues to move forward. People learn and grow and figure things out. But if we don't stop this evil, all of that may cease. The gears will stop turning. And then nothingness. I don't wish that upon you or any of your friends. also wish that this place continues to blossom. I wish to see no more evil in these woods. You are strange. No one, not one soul has entered this layer before. Something about you is different. I will help. What can I do? That's what we're still putting together. We've got a plan, but I don't know how much of one. There is a place called the Raised Fortress that we know that they are continuing to operate out of like before. I know of this place. And last I had heard a man named Braun from the Ironwood Watchers wants to lead another strike force against it. Before they can strike back against us. Because the man leading those Black Lone Demons and their forces plan to strike back against the town once more with an even greater force than yesterday. Today, apologies. And if the town falls, then only evil will roam these woods. Unfortunately, you have no idea exactly what that would come from this. The man seeking this <clears throat> plans to... I don't know how much you know the world's entire geography. Are you familiar with the Wall of Ocelia? Wall? No. <sighs> Keeping it a brief, it is holding back the diseased lands that are the that is the mire at this point, the Mirefold. They've been diseased by the god of madness. At that, she kind of like recoils. And the man who is attacking this town wants to break down that wall. And 
so if they succeed here, and the god of madness comes here, the god of madness comes everywhere. I think it's time that my friends awake from their slumber. We will be ready by dawn. Okay. It was nice. It was a new experience and I thank you for it. It was pleasant. I think you as well. I now know a little more about this biosphere. And now I know there are more like me. Ones who truly are connected with their surroundings. Yes, there are a few. You are of true hearts. Thank you. I will be seeing you again. We'll see you at dawn. And that with that, she bows her head, and um, your vision seems to like shift, and you are both at the tree line of nasal. <sighs> that we'll go ahead and end the episode oh. stop <laughs> yeah. I just under my breath I was like yeah he does <laughs> I hate all of you <gasps> I know it's okay I'm so grateful we get to do this every week guys that was that was a wild ride guys yeah I love how we just but oh hey, God. no combat this session. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh. People. <laughs> Death almost occurred with zero combat. Yeah. 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 Impressive. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was not prepared for the force of the high five, and so I was worried I was going to hit yeah. myself in the face with that one. All right. Sweet God. There okay. we go. All right. We won. We won, DP. <laughs> And so, the Rift Seekers sought the aid of Guile, the Saint of War, and the Spirit of the Brookborn Forest. With their help, the Rift Seekers gain a significant advantage against the Black Glim Demons. Now, as they return to Nasal, they prepare for battle. Well, that's all I have for you today. If you want more, why not consider joining our Discord? There you can talk to the players of the campaign and be a part of our lovely community. Thank you again for listening, dear friend, and goodbye for now.